Good Sunday morning, Northeast Ohio. On this, the last unofficial week of summer, heading into the Labor Day weekend, the labor market took a couple of hits as the trade war with China escalated this week with a new round of tariffs announced on Friday. Job numbers for last year were revised down this week by a half million, and a key measure of manufacturing activity in the U.S. has indicated a contraction for the first time in nearly a decade. That being said, manufacturers in Northeast Ohio say things are still looking bright. In fact, 60% of them say they would actually grow faster if they could just find skilled workers. Two years ago, Stephanie here was working in the restaurant business when she realized... I was capped out actually where I was. I was the front of the house manager and there was nowhere else I could go except for owning the place, which I did not want to do. A friend who worked at Jurgens Manufacturing in Cleveland told her about opportunities there. She applied, never looked back. Literally like two years ago, if you would have said that I would be working in a warehouse and enjoying it, I would have been like, no, you're insane. Stephanie took a non-typical career path and Jurgens took a non-typical path to find her, something they say is needed these days to put skilled people in open positions. We're looking at people from, from re-entry, we're looking at people with special needs, we're looking at people that maybe come from a different career path. Celebrating and sharing what works here with other manufacturers is the thinking behind a newly formed manufacturing sector partnership unveiled in Cuyahoga County. The goal, I would say midterm because we're also thinking about long game, but in the next three years of this sector partnership is to bring 3,000 new people into manufacturing career paths. This effort, manufacturers believe, will set them up to succeed by bringing together job suppliers and job seekers more easily. So I can be in a room with Towards Employment, Youth Opportunities Unlimited. I can be in there with the Urban League and say, here's what I need from a demand side to supply me with the good people. And anytime you can be more efficient, particularly in manufacturing, that's the name of the game. Because while bigger manufacturers have the resources to go out and recruit workers, this will help the smaller ones who may not. The manufacturers that are hurting the most are some of the middle market manufacturers. Some of the very largest can invest a little bit more in finding their talent, but the middle market, who are also the suppliers to the large manufacturers, need more help. A very quiet economic engine in Northeast Ohio sits on the edge of Cleveland Hopkins Airport, NASA Glen, a place that looks to be very busy over the next five years and beyond. We learned this summer that 50 years ago we could not have gone to the moon without NASA Glen. We learned this week we can't go back without them either. At a time of budget uncertainty in Washington, when NASA itself is looking at an overall decrease in funds, NASA Glenn's budget has been steadily increasing from $655 million in 2017 to $937 million this year. There are very few facilities, federal facilities in the country that can claim, you know, this kind of increase. That's because the areas that NASA Glenn focuses on are ones that are key to the Artemis mission to return to the moon in 2024 and Mars beyond. This is a critically important center for the next 50 years of our country, whether it's aeronautics or space exploration or living and working on another world. And Jim Bridenstine's opinion is one that matters. He is the head of NASA. He was in Cleveland with Senator Rob Portman and Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur to tour the work being done at NASA Glenn. What is unique about NASA Glenn is that it is a research center, but it is not a research center for the sake of research. There are applications here that are absolutely essential to sustaining life off the Earth. Things like solar electric propulsion, which will be key to a small space station that will circle around the moon known as Gateway, to nuclear power on the surface of the moon. Things needed to live and work on another world. That other world is Mars, but we're going to prove it out on the moon. And all of those technologies and capabilities are being built uh, right here at the Glenn Research Center. NASA Glenn and NASA Plumbrook and Sandusky account for 7,000 jobs in northern Ohio with an economic impact of $1.4 billion. Well, the economic impact of your Cleveland Indians is large, although not as large as last year. Year-to-year -year comparisons are difficult mid-season. After all, this time last year, heading into this weekend, the Indians had a worse record, but somehow managed to enjoy a 12-game lead in the division. They also had more fans, about 11.5% more than we're seeing this year, something that may not be that visible to the eye, but is certainly visible when it comes to the wallet of the team and the city. So 2,700 fans a game, fewer than last year, comes to 172,000 fans over the years so far, with an estimated average ticket price of 31 bucks. That's a drop of $5.4 to the team in revenue at the gate. And to the city that gets an 8% admission tax, that would be a hit of $430,000. Attendance across the league is down, and the Indians say the bad weather this spring had an impact. The good thing is we're averaging 7,000 more fans this summer than we did in April and May. I mean, April and May, with the weather we had, really set us behind. 
Uh, so we've been playing catch up all season long. And with a September that includes the White Sox, Tigers, Twins, and Phillies, they're hoping to give the team the lift that allows stadium offers. They want to perform, they want to win every game, but that extra boost uh, during a long season, especially in these tight games, uh, it means the world to them. The first pitch this afternoon against the Royals in a couple of hours at 110. With Democracy 2019, I'm John Kasich. Enjoy your Sunday.